Elizabeth Holmes, Theranos, guilty, young woman in prison for a long time time. Well, that's the read today. So I hope you like the reading. If you do, please do like it. And if uh, you haven't subscribed, I know you're watching. So go ahead and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Wow. Cool. Hi, I'm Mark. And this is my journey through tarot. Come on. Okay, so Elizabeth Holmes, brilliant woman, had an amazing future ahead of her. You won't believe her background when I tell you about it. And um, why, why, why do these people insist on defrauding people instead of using their brilliant minds to do good? It's just amazing to me. Wait till you hear about Elizabeth Holmes. This is fascinating. Here we go. So in 1984, Elizabeth Holmes was born on February 3rd, so she's an Aquarius. And she was born in Washington, D.C., and uh, she is an American biotechnology entrepreneur now convicted of criminal fraud. Uh, she attended high school in Houston. She was interested in computer programming and started her first business selling C++. What is C++? It's an object-oriented computer language. Okay, So she was selling C++ compliers to Chinese universities. Uh, her parents had arranged uh, Mandarin Chinese home tutoring for her partway through high school, and Elizabeth began attending Stanford University summer uh, Mandarin language program. Now, her father was a VP at Enron. Do you remember Enron? Okay, and uh, which of course went bankrupt after a worldwide accounting fraud scandal. And he also held executive positions in the U.S. Agency for International Development, the Environmental Protection Agency, and uh, the U.S. Trade and Development Agency. He's of Danish and Hungarian uh, ancestry, and Elizabeth's third great-grandfather, Charles Fleischmann, you may remember that uh, name from your grocery pantry, Fleischmann, was a Hungarian Jewish immigrant who founded what? Fleischmann's Yeast. Uh, and uh, one of his kids uh, was a mayor of Cincinnati from 1900 to 1905. Elizabeth's mother was a U.S. Congressional Committee staffer, so very well connected this family. In 2002, Elizabeth uh, attended Stanford. She studied chemical engineering and worked as a student researcher slash laboratory assistant. Uh, after her freshman year, she worked in a laboratory at the Genome Institute of Singapore testing for coronavirus through collection of blood samples with syringes. I mean, she had such a promising future. 2003, she filed her first uh, patent application, and it was a wearable drug delivery patch, which I think we still use. I don't know if it's her patent, but we use those. And she founded Real Time Cures, the company, uh, in Palo Alto, California, to democratize health care. Her fear of needles was a motivation to perform blood tests with uh, tiny amounts of blood. I guess she was scared of a truth serum, right? Um, her Stanford medicine professor said, your idea isn't going to work, but an advisor and dean at the school backed her, and uh, she renamed the company Theranos, which is a combination of therapy and diagnosis, and I never knew that until this very minute, Theranos. 2004, at the age of 20, she dropped out of Stanford and used her tuition money to seed funding for a consumer health care technology company, which became uh, Theranos. And, uh, and of course, now that's a defunct health care technology company that soared in valuation after claiming revolutionary blood testing with a tiny fingerprint samples of blood. She raised six million dollars to fund the firm. In 2007, one of her employees um, knew that she was an admirer of Steve Jobs and uh, suggested she deliberately copy his black turtleneck sweater. And in public, she began speaking in a deep baritone voice. You remember that voice? She speaks with a deep baritone voice. Although a colleague claimed she spoke in a typical voice of a woman her age when she, he was hired. Her family maintains that her baritone voice is authentic. Of course, we know who her family is, so, you know, how much is, I don't know. Um, in 2010, Theranos had more than 92 million in venture capital. Imagine that. And in 2011, Elizabeth was introduced to a former Secretary of State that was uh, Charles Schultz. And after a two-hour meeting, he joined Theranos Board of Directors. She operated Theranos in stealth mode, no press releases or company website. And then uh, 2013, she partnered with Walgreens to launch in-store blood sample collection centers. I mean, she knew it didn't work, and she did this anyway. 
2014, Elizabeth appeared on the covers of Fortune, Forbes, the New York Times magazine, magazine and Style Magazine, and Incorporated Magazine, uh, recognizing her as the world's youngest self-made female billionaire. Then the Wall Street Journal uh, initiated a secret months-long investigation from a tip from a medical expert and company documents obtained from whistleblowers. Uh, 2015, in just 11 years, Forbes had named Elizabeth the youngest, wealthiest, self-made billionaire in America due to that $9 million valuation of her company, but the Wall Street Journal published that bombshell article detailing inaccurate results. And the company used machines her company used machines, not her machines, but machines manufactured by other companies for most of its testing. Why? Because her machines don't work. In 2016, the Centers for Medicare, can't you imagine her just getting that deal with Walgreens and then scrambling to get some machines in there and start analyzing tests so she could put out results because her machines don't work? When did she think she wasn't going to get caught? I'm sorry. Uh, 2016, the Centers for Medicare and Medical Services, CMS, you know, uh, sent a warning letter to Theranos uncovering irregularities with staff, procedures, and equipment and proposed a two-year ban on Elizabeth from owning or operating a certified clinical company. Uh, they did ban her, and Walgreens ended its relationship, plus the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, ordered a cease of um, use of that device from her company, which of course didn't work anyway. In 2017, the state of Arizona filed suit that the company had sold 1.5 million blood tests to Arizonans concealing or misrepresenting, misrepresenting important facts. She settled uh, refunding 4.6 million to customers, which included fines and fees. Then the criminal trial began. And after being delayed due to COVID and her pregnancy, the case uh, evidence outlined fake demonstrations falsified validation reports, misleading claims, and of course, overstated financials, a la Trump. In 28, they all follow basically really the same playbook, these, these uh, white collar billionaire criminal thieves. In 2018, the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission charged Theranos and Elizabeth with massive fraud, which she settled for $500,000 fine and returning 18.9 million shares to the company relinquishing her voting voting control and being barred from serving as an officer or director of a public company for at least 10 years. Uh, a federal grand jury indicted her on nine counts of wire fraud and two counts of conspiracy to commit wire fraud with the victims being investors, doctors, and patients. And then in 2021, now the trial U.S. versus Holmes et al. began. 2022, it ended. And uh, Holmes is guilty on four counts of defrauding investors, three counts of wire fraud, and one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud. She awaits sentencing, remaining at liberty on a $500,000 bail. And it's secured with only her promissory signature. Uh, she faces 20 years in federal prison plus millions in restitution and fines. The sentences could likely be concurrent. And the New York Times says the case symbolizes the pitfalls of Silicon Valley's culture of hustle, hype, and greed. Let's do the cards. So this is the Crow Tarot by M.J. Cullinan. I suppose that's how that's pronounced. And uh, they come in a really nice, sturdy box. Um, if you got this as a gift, you feel like, you know, that was a nice gift. The uh, guidebook is pretty interesting. Uh, it has uh, good uh, suggestions on how to use these cards for divination. And then right in the back here, it talks about the artist and the author of Crow Tarot. And it just says that Margot Jones, so that is MJ in the MJ Cullinan, is a Seattle-based artist, writer, mother, and lover of all things magical, especially crow. She attended Parsons School of Design, yet her unique te uh, technique of telling stories through digital collage is self-taught and has been her passion for over 10 years. And I don't know that's as of when. Um, nature and its creatures are a familiar theme in MJ's work. However, having grown up in the south of Boston, her collages are heavily influenced by the energy of the city. Her work often merges the two worlds. Her path into the world of tarot was a beautiful accident that came out of a difficult time in her life. The process of creating Crow Tarot helped her rediscover her own wings, though at the time she didn't realize how life-changing the project would become. She simply fell in love with the process, the messages, and the feeling uh, each card revoked. The Crow Tarot, MJ's first published deck, has achieved a significant following and recognition with crow lovers and the tarot community. When MJ is not making art or writing for her Crow Tarot blog, 
Hmm. She's spending time with her daughter River, playing in nature, practicing magic, and finding new sources of inspiration. So I love that, to, to know a little bit about the artist. And uh, like I say, the descriptions here are useful in the divination, especially when so much thought has gone into the cards. The, the cards themselves are just really amazing, and I love using these cards a lot. They've got a sort of a, an antique uh, kind of patina to the cards. I mean, it's not really a patina because it's fake, but you can see how each card has a little wornness about it that kind of makes them uh, fun to use, and they're beautiful cards. And, you know, what, the reason I do this is for those folks who don't get to see uh, full decks of tarot cards very often, at least this way you get a little preview of some of these cards. And uh, it's a nice way to uh, shuffle up the cards without damaging them. I like to keep my cards in good shape as long as I can. And um, so that is the Crow Tarot. So Elizabeth Holmes, good heavens. But, you know, let's first just take a second and uh, meditate. Just a second. See? Easy. So Elizabeth, how did you never... When did you think... I mean, these the problem is these people start out not thinking they're criminals. You know, it, it, they're just fudging a little bit. You know, they're just doing, you know, almost nothing. It's like running a stop sign, right? And then, uh, and then when it all starts going wrong, but now you've got millions of dollars, good heavens. And uh, I think she's going to spend 20 years at least uh, in prison. Uh, my God, it's a good thing she's young. But um, how nice for her child. Her child will grow up, which for me, she got pregnant, hoping that that would somehow sway this trial, I guess. But now that child will grow up. If she's in there for 20 years, that child will be an adult before she's out of prison. How strange. So, six cards to begin with. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, then we'll get four more at the end to finish off this Celtic cross. But uh, right now, Elizabeth Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes. Let's just see what the cards tell us about her. The signifier card, Justice. Wow, that is uncanny. Yeah, karma has caught up with Elizabeth Holmes. Wow. Oh, weird. Okay, the challenge to Justice, though, is uh, this Four of Wands. So Four of Wands are short-term celebrations. I don't know how, uh, and Wands are, uh, you know, plans um, moving forward. Action. Uh, the Four of Wands typically uh, represents a, um, a, a, a celebration, like a, a marriage tent. A smaller celebration, I always say, uh, that indicates something bigger coming on. But in this case, I've got to say, Karma caught up with, with Elizabeth Holmes, and it's challenged by... There were a few counts that she didn't... Uh, that she was said that she was guilty of out of all the accounts that were against her. So maybe that could be the small celebration. Interesting. The base of this reading is, uh, so the nine of wands. And the nine of wands, uh, wands actions, uh, forward movement, planning. And uh, could this be that there is, she's and is feeling embattled. So this nine of wands, this crow has got one wand uh, uh, to, to deal with all of this with. So that's the base of this. And um, all of her plans have, uh, have have run out. The past of this reading is the five of coins. So the five of coins, I've got to remember, five of coins, five of coins, it's not, I've got to look it up. So the five of pentacles is coins. I can't remember uh, how this is depicted in the right away. Oh, it's usually depicted as, um, no, I don't, I don't remember. But anyway, it is, it is all bad. So she came into this, uh, I mean, with no hope whatsoever. Her value was, was um, minimal. In the sky of this, strength. I think she does have that. I think she does have this strength. And even though she'll be locked up for a long time, um, eventually she'll come out of it okay for someone who had to be locked up for a long time. Uh, the likely outcome is the hermit. Well, yeah, of course, she's going away. She's going to look for the light. She's going to try to find her way. And she's going to have a long time to do it. Wow. So um, the last four cards to finish this out for Elizabeth Holmes 
uh, this the self, the very self of that question, which uh, I've been trying to start uh, putting these over here like they should be on a Celtic cross. Uh, the self of this issue, uh, Elizabeth Holmes, is this ace of wands. So the ace is another plan. Uh, wands are plans or actions or forward movement, fire. And this ace of wands, this crow is very uh, uh, useful. And uh, and he will find a way to make this work. He's taking this wand to get this task accomplished. So the very self of this is that she is a very resourceful person. She'll get through this, uh, even at its worst. Um, the uh, environment that that's in, though, for Elizabeth Holmes, is this page of cups. And, you know, the page is the weakest of the court cards, but he is in the royal court. And uh, cups are uh, emotions, compassion, and this uh, cup has got a little surprise about to pop out of it. It looks like a shark. And so this page of cups is just a weak message of compassion with a surprise, okay? And the hopes and fears for Elizabeth Holmes right now is this uh, four of cups, cups again being emotions or compassions or, or passionate situations. And uh, so this four of cups is being offered something that you don't really want. But look, you, you, you do have some, uh, you've got something left already. So I don't know, that could be jail time, I suppose. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing for Elizabeth Holmes right here is, oh, look at that, the two of pentacles, keeping things balanced. That's what she has to do. She has to find a balance while she does uh, pay her the price that uh, she has to pay. Very interesting read for Elizabeth Holmes. So perhaps the days when anybody can become filthy rich by lying to all of us are over. No, they're not over, but maybe they're waning. I don't know if they're waning, but tell me what you thought of the read. I enjoyed doing it. I'm Mark, My Journey Through Tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. One, two, three. You really make a big difference. Thank you.